not feeling super good today, so I apologize if I'm just not upbeat enough. So for part of the Improvement Hell Challenge, they want us to do a two-point perspective, and I am currently working on chapter seven of Seven Inch Kara, and rather than doing two separate exercises and kind of spinning my wheels, I thought it would be wiser to go ahead and do the cover, which utilize, which will utilize two points two-point perspective um, as a demonstration for you guys. But to begin with, I want to pull out a sketchbook and show you really quickly what I mean when we're talking about two-point perspective. So in our last uh, perspective demonstration, we did one-point perspective, and you can check out that video by clicking this card here. So we're still using our horizon line, but this time, instead of one vanishing point, we have two vanishing points. And I'm gonna quickly jot out some grid lines. And this is just a very basic demonstration because in order to really master perspective for comics, you have to use it all the time. You have to use it frequently or else it's just another thing that sort of complicates things for you. And I recommend you do practice it. Um, when I'm working on Kara, I definitely utilize one and two and coming up three point perspective to help me draw more believable backgrounds. So uh, the most common exercise to demonstrate two point perspective would be drawing a cube. And I apologize for my lack of control. This pencil so short that makes it hard to control what it's doing. Need to pop an extender on there. So in two point perspective, your vertical lines still go straight up, but your horizontal lines all go to one of two points. Giving the indication of three dimensionality. Now this will work, especially if you've put down the grid, you can draw all sorts of shapes. So we're gonna quickly sketch in a circle. We're gonna determine the middle of the circle. We're going to draw a vertical line. And then we're going to drop two lines going down to the furthest corners of the circle, corners being relative. And so now we have a cone which could be a tree, or it could be like a party hat, or it could be the top of a tower. And for circles or spheres, really, what you are doing is you want to think about it first as a square, or as a cube is what I really mean. You want to think about it first as a cube, and then you want to drop your circle in that. And... What's really gonna sell um, for rounded objects is how you shade your object. So since the top is darkest here on that square, I'm giving it a darker top. Anyway, that's a very quick demonstration of two-point perspective. So. Um, I have demonstrated perspective for you guys um, in my other in my intro to comic craft videos and when I'm doing perspective by hand like this you really need your your two points pretty far away from one another so what I do um, I would run out of paper quickly so I tape some scrap paper to the sides of the image that I need to do perspective grids for. So I'll just go ahead and add additional paper. All right, guys, so I have extended my picture plane, or my, rather extended my drawing surface so that I have more room to draw. And you guys may notice that most of my lines are going up, which means I need a higher horizon line. So up here should be good. Now, the thing about higher horizon lines is it's going to show more of your ground, whereas lower horizon lines are gonna show more of your sky. So I go ahead and I 
draw that horizon line and I like to go ahead and label it. And I talk about this in my two points perspective tutorial, which I linked earlier in the video. And then I go ahead and using the sketch, the thumbnails that I blew up, I'm going to go ahead and find my two vanishing points. In fact, the one right here, that might actually be a little too far in which would cause the image to look skewed. So I'm gonna erase that line and I'm going to draw my vanishing point further out. And I'm using non-photo blue lead because when I scan it, I can drop the non-photo blue out in Photoshop and leave the graphite behind. And I have tutorials on the blog for how to do that if you're interested. The blue lead is mostly to serve as a guideline. Okay, so we've got our first vanishing point. I'm gonna mark it here with a hash mark. Now I'm going to extend my horizon line because I drew it a little too short. And I'm going to, I may need to add a third page in fact. So let me do that and I'll get right back with you guys. Extending that vanishing, I mean that horizon line. Mm. It's like right on the line between the two pages. So I probably could have gotten away with not adding that extra sheet. But I did want to be careful. So now that I've determined my two vanishing points, I'm going to go ahead and basically draw a grid. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this, my two vanishing points as my pivot points for my ruler. And I'm going to draw lines going all the way down. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I don't even know if you guys can see too well what I'm doing and I apologize for that. Unfortunately, the non-photo blue is a necessity on my part. I can't get away without it. But this should look familiar from the demonstration I showed you guys earlier in the video. And I like to draw my lines extending, even if it only touches a little bit, it really helps me when I'm planning my environment and figuring out placement for things. So it's really better for you to put in a little bit of extra effort, even if you realize you don't need it, than to skimp on the effort and regret it later, especially while you're just learning a technique. Because the more time you put into learning a technique, the better you're going to be at utilizing that technique. So unfortunately, I don't think you guys can see it. I'm going to try and fix the camera angle, but I've gone ahead and lost many le leads and also finished drawing in my grid. And this is basically going to be the guideline for making sure my drawing looks correct proportionally. So I'm going to go ahead and start by squaring off the small jewelry box here. And I'm not gonna worry too much about any particular details. I'm just going to worry about making everything square or really a rectangle in this instance. And once I've squared everything off, I can fig work on figuring out details and such. Actually, I need to make this longer because one of the notes I got in my critique was that it's forming a tangent and I am freehanding this but I recommend you do this instead with a ruler and I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up with an eraser that way there aren't any wrong lines to confuse either of us and another here That way, that way the box can open. I don't know why I keep trying to draw above the actual line when I should really just utilize the line I have drawn, like that. 
and then to divide this um, this face of the box I'm going to draw two diagonals and where they meet is the midpoint so down there is where I want to put the key in the middle of the bottom of the box now the challenge is going to come or a challenge, I should say, is going to come from, see how the box is open in the sketch? And the lid is at a tilt. Now I could have the lid going straight up and that would be a lot easier. Or I could draw another horizon line and have that, um, that guide how the box lid is going to go. I think I might chicken out and have it go. Maybe, yeah, it's still a curve, but a lesser. Of course, you can and maybe even should explore setting up your perspective grids using a tool like Manga Studio makes it a lot easier and you would save yourself a lot of guesswork as well. And there are loads of really good tutorials here on YouTube for how to do just that. I am not familiar enough with the program to feel comfortable providing a tutorial on how to um, how to set up perspective grids or even how to draw perspective grids in Manga Studio. But if you search, you know, how to set up perspective in Manga Studio or in Clip Studio Paint, the actual official page for Clip Studio Paint will have instructions on, uh, I'm sorry, tutorials that they've commissioned artists to do for them. So while I work on my perspective here for the cover, I was going somewhere with that and I apologize. I have a migraine so it's actually incredibly hard to concentrate but I am trying to not only get the Improvement Hell Challenge handled and all of the demonstrations that I'm doing for you guys handled, but I'm also trying to work on Chapter 7 of 7 Inch Kara, and I've been writing a lot about comic craft over at natasoup.blogspot.com, which is my main blog, and if you guys haven't yet checked it out, I really recommend you do so. Um, and I... Uh, you are looking for additional resources on perspective. I've done, I want to say, three or four video tutorials on perspective specifically for comics in my Intro to Comic Craft series here. And I've also done um, A few I believe on the blog but for the most part I I am competent enough <laughs> with perspective but I don't really feel confident in teaching you guys anything beyond one and two point so I would really recommend that you check out some of the excellent resources that are available there are loads of comic artists here on YouTube who do um, they demonstrate more elaborate comicking techniques than I do um, I recommend you check them out especially if you're interested in digital arts I do try to keep my focus fairly traditional and many of them um, utilize Photoshop and Manga Studio and Clip Studio Paint and Paint Tool Sci um, to work on, accomplish their comics. And here I am trying to get that mirror. And at the end of the video, I'll go ahead and list some 
of the book resources that I've used to learn how to do perspective for comics. And um, you can also check the description below for recommendations as well. And it's definitely something that the more you practice it, the easier it's going to get. I remember I really had a hard time with it um, when I first started at SCAD, mostly because no other part of my art education had ever taken the time to teach perspective. I think a lot of um, fine art outside of um, maybe uh, architecture, a lot of fine artists are a bit uncomfortable with, uh, they might utilize perspective and utilize perspective grids, but they're uncomfortable teaching others how to do it. At least that's sort of the impression I got when I was <laughs> being taught it. And I think maybe it's because they just didn't use it as often as, um, as say a comic artist would use, need to use it. Okay, so I'm squaring this off down here because I have a doily that I want to draw. And I'm going to go ahead and subdivide that because it makes it easier to draw a circle that way. And Andrew Loomis um, actually has an excellent perspective drawing book. Um, it can get a little complicated at times, um, so I do recommend you supplement it with other resources, but it certainly will help if you need to uh, divide spaces up for windows or for doors or to draw unusual shapes um, repetitively in repetition, I guess would be the better word. And in case you haven't figured it out yet, um, so I'm basically drawing a small person, a Lilliputian, and um, I'm drawing them in sort of like a table top, like a nightstand setting. Um, and that's kind of what Seven Inch Kara is all about. It's about uh, Kara, our, uh, my Lilliputian character, making friends with the human girl, Naomi, for the first time. it is important to populate your environment with objects that way people know what um, where the setting is I know that sounds like a duh but we often tend to shortchange when we're designing environments in our stories we're often we often shortchange them of set dressing of items props so um, to make your environment look more believable, you do need to include an adequate number of props. And I find that uh, with my thumbnail, you know, it's so small, I never really include enough. So as I am working on the rough here, I'm trying to think of more things that I can put in. Um, just more ways to give the reader an idea of Naomi, the girl who owns the room, to give the reader an idea of her personality. She's actually on this cover, so it is important to introduce or sort of give the um, reader an introduction to her personality. Lamp in the background. I'm trying to think about how I can do that because it wasn't in my um, my thumbnail. Thumbnail was actually of a slightly smaller space. I ended up extending the space a bit because I thought it felt a little too small. I also have something right here. I can't tell what that is sort of made it less clear. So I'm going back to my thumbnails and unfortunately the thumbnails are not any more clear at all. Oh it's a plant! I had drawn a little succulent on her desk. Now that I see it. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm actually 
going to drag the pot over a little bit. Then I want to um, add some more things to help give an indication that this is a lived-in environment and give the reader some clues about the person who owns the jewelry box. And I'm also going to want to do a design on the exterior of the box as well. I was thinking um, sort of just large loosely drawn flowers. This is going to end up when I'm finished, I'm going to going to watercolor these pages anyway. So um, this is the things like like the flowers on the box. Those would be painted details. But I am sketching them in to remind myself that that's something I need to do. And then over here as well. Now I got to tackle that lamp. Round base, which you guys can not even see, and a goose neck is pretty much my desk lamp right here. But why not? Okay, so we have the basis for um, the chapter cover illustration, which is a two point illustration, two point perspective background. So I'm going to sketch in the title because my covers always have the title. And then I will pencil this in time lapse for you guys. And stay tuned because I do still have those book recommendations for y'all. And if you have any questions or if you need to see anything demonstrated um, in further detail, just send me a comment below and I'll try to get to that as soon as I can.
guys, so the cover, at least the cover rough, is just about finished. As you can see, I designed an environment and I populated it with objects and characters to try and bring that environment to life and to make it a believable environment that you can envision in your mind. If you are interested in learning more about perspective, there are lots of great books on the subject. I recommend Perspective Made Easy by Dover Art Instruction, The Art of Perspective, The Ultimate Guide for Artists in Every Medium, and especially Perspective for Comic Book Artists, How to Achieve a Professional Look in Your Artwork by David Chelsea, and Extreme Perspective for Artists, Learn the Secrets to Curvilinear, Curvilinear Cylindrical, Fisheye, Isometric, and Other Amazing Systems that Will Make Your Drawings Pop Off the Page. It's a really long, awkward title, but it is a really great resource to have, and it's a good book. It's even both of the David Chelsea books are very amusing to just read. Um, they're enjoyably written. So I highly recommend those last two books that I gave you. And I recommend that you guys check out Perspective Tutorials here on YouTube. So thank you so much for joining me for, I want to say, day 10 of the Improvement Hell Challenge for the cover illustration for 7-inch Cara, seven inch Cara Chapter 7. And and um, for our two-point perspective demonstration. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to help you out at, to the best of my ability. Um, if you have any suggestions for future videos, let me know that as well. I'm always interested in knowing what you guys want to see here on this channel. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like and uh, consider subscribing for more art education videos and if you're looking for more comic tutorials I check out I recommend you check out my playlist intro to comic craft and I recommend you head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and uh, in the search bar check for intro to comic craft in there as well because there are even more tutorials over there so have a great day guys bye